to my channel. Today I am going to be doing a kind of recap on my mental health. So my first disclaimer is that if you're on antidepressants and you feel like you don't need them anymore, you have to go to your doctor and speak to them. I really do not recommend changing your dosage, completely stop taking them, none of that without your doctor's approval. I have been on Zoloft sertraline for a little over seven and a half years and I've been having a lot of side effects lately. The place I'm at now is completely different from where I was seven and a half years ago. I know who I am now. At that point I was you know in grade 11 in high school. I know I'm in a better mental state than I was then. I'm in a better physical state than I was then. I have better support which is the most important thing with this decision that I've made is I know I have an extremely supportive team behind me and I've decided that being a completely different person than I was then I am going to try to wean myself off and stop taking my medication again don't recommend this unless you're being followed closely by a doctor or a psychiatrist at first I wasn't going to tell anyone except for you know, my support group, my close friends and my family, but I decided that looking at it from like a scientific kind of experiment and my openness that I've had with my anxiety and depression and OCD in the past, I thought bringing you guys on the journey, whoever wants to watch this, you guys could also, you know, learn something. The biggest thing is everyone is different. No matter what you're diagnosed with, you're going to deal with it in a different way. I listened to a TED talk the other day that discussed emotions. We don't have a specific place in our brain that triggers emotions. Emotions are our brain's way of dealing with outside stimuli and basing it on past experiences to create feelings inside like butterflies in your stomach. And then those feelings are what lead to having emotions. So you'll start to feel those butterflies in your stomach. And based on that, in your prior experience, you will feel anxious or you will feel excited or you will feel, you know, anything that you relate to having butterflies in your stomach. Your brain doesn't actually tell you, hey, time to be anxious now. It tells you something's wrong, something's changing, and it affects your body in ways like sweating palms, shaky, agitated, and that leads to emotions. So this lady was talking about how we have more control over our own emotions than most people think we do. And not only is that a good thing, because it means that we can, you know, change our behaviors and how we're feeling, we can kind of be like, no, what? no, I don't need to be anxious about this situation. But she also made sure to point out that it, you can't just get rid of anxiety by telling yourself, no, it's not a good time right now. Um, people that have severe anxiety will continue to have severe anxiety, but it is a way that you can learn to better cope. You can try and shut those emotions down or fuel those emotions in a different direction. My side effects that I had the other night, I took my pills and then I had extreme heartburn. And I'm not talking like heartburn like, oh, I should go lay down or I'm gonna take a Tums. This was heartburn like death, if death would have knocked on my door, I would have happily went with him. I was in the most pain I've ever been in. I would take breaking my ankle or, you know, like getting cut or getting a tattoo or getting pierced over this feeling, hands down. Um, when it started, it was just like a light heartburn, like normal. You know, I just ate spicy food, I had a little bit of heartburn, oh no, I'll take a Tums. But it progressed and my eyes felt like they were going to pop out of my head. I was sweating, I was feverish, I was hot and cold. I felt like I was going, going to like vomit fire. I had a migraine and I literally couldn't function. It was about eight o'clock and I had to go to bed. And I just laid there for like two hours in complete agony, 
wishing it would be over. And I woke up the next day and I said, you know what, I think it's time that I try it. That I go to my doctor and I tell him I don't want to be on medication anymore and see where it goes from there. So this is a science experiment of sorts. I don't know how my body's going to react. I know when you stop taking medication that you've been on for eight years, you probably will go through symptoms of withdrawal. So the next week I'm going to be dealing with that. Um, so I know I'm going to be on a roller coaster of emotions and feelings and my body is going to react in a way that I haven't experienced before. I have to try and get past that and make it to two, three, four weeks before I really start to notice if I'm different without my medication and if I can cope without my medication. And yeah, it's going to be a learning experience. It's going to be a lot of self-evaluation. I am going to have to, you know, think, okay, I'm feeling a little bit tired today. Is it because I didn't take my medication or is it because I worked out for an extra hour yesterday? Is it because I'm coming down with the flu? Is it because I didn't eat breakfast? Like, I'm going to have to evaluate everything so closely and keep a journal of everything I'm feeling. And I thought maybe talking to you guys would be kind of like keeping an open conversation about it as well. So it could be really beneficial. Um, so that is why I have decided to film my feelings and speak to you guys about what's going on in my head right now. Um, so this is day four of not taking my medication. I still don't really feel any different than I would have four or five days ago. So I'm trying to keep, for a scientific basis, you want to keep your environment the same. I'm trying to treat every day just like I normally would, keeping up my same routines, doing the same things I normally would, going to bed at the same times, and that way the only change is the fact that I'm not taking medication. So this is, again, it's completely, you know, experimental. Um, again, don't do this without your doctor and good support group behind you. So I have quite a few friends that know what I'm going through and are reaching out to me every day to make sure that I'm still me and you know just encouraging me and keeping me focused on my main goal and that is to figure out if I can function as Renee without my medication because it's been eight years and I know I'm not the same Renee that I was eight years ago but is that because of my medication or is that because I'm older and I'm more mature and I've had life experience and I know how to better cope. Hopefully at the end of the day, I will come out on the other side still as me and be medication free. But if that's not the case and I have to go back on my medication, then I've learned that the chemistry in my brain just isn't what it should be. It's not at normal levels. I don't produce enough serotonin, which is what they originally diagnosed me with. But there's no scientific certainty. They can't diagnose you saying your brain doesn't produce enough serotonin and be 100% certain that is the case, that it's not situational, that it's not the stimuli on the outside affecting how you feel on the inside. This may be the only winter that I am completely unemployed and that's why I'm choosing to do it at this point. Been on the medication for almost eight years. This may be my only chance to do it without it affecting my job and my social life. Like it's going to affect all of these things, but not having a full-time job right now is definitely one thing that I'm completely grateful for because I don't think I'd be able to do this with the stress of a job as well because it would just, I wouldn't know if it was the job or if it was the lack of medication, you know? This is exciting, but also kind of scary and so far so good I mean I'm still me and that's hopefully that's what doesn't change the three reasons I haven't been as completely active on social media as I'd really like to be one I'm going through this incredible change and I wasn't sure if I wanted to share it with you guys or not but 
I've personally made this decision that it is best for me and it could be good for someone else out there if I do it with you guys. So here I am, I'm going to be speaking about it and I'm taking a leap of faith that you guys will be supportive. I know there's a lot of cruel people out there on the internet. Don't try and tear me down right now. I'm unstable. <laughs> Second, my skin has been so dry and I absolutely hate putting makeup on it right now. So that is one of the <laughs> main reasons I haven't been filming a lot of makeup videos. Three, for any of you guys that are in cheerleading or have done cheerleading or know anything about cheerleading, right now is kind of a pivotal moment for us three things that have been kind of holding me back from filming and editing and just posting. Make sure if you do feel like you're ready to take that step into trying life without them, you have a doctor closely following you and it's not for everyone. Some people definitely need to be on their medication for the rest of their life depending on the severity of your illness, what the illness is, what type of medication you're on. Make sure you do it safely, make sure you do it with the knowledge of a medical professional and make sure you have a good support team that knows what's going on, that is going to check in with you every single day to make sure you are you and you are okay. Hopefully at the end of the day, I just get an answer. Do I need to be on medication for the rest of my life? Are these side effects worth it? And can I be myself without it? We'll find out. This is going to be a crazy experience. It's going to be a roller coaster and I just wanted to let you guys have the option of joining it with me. Thanks for joining in today guys. I'm going to check back in in a few days. Bye guys. I didn't have Hades then. He has, he has been. Yeah, he has been. <laughs>